Hello, friends. Welcome to Just a Couple of Guys with your host, Pat Kremitz. Yes, sir. Happy to be here. And yours truly, Ray Rogina. Today was a special edition of Just a Couple of Guys. We're on First Street in St. Charles and the culmination of a two decade project, the First Street Project, that does culminate with the First Street Plaza. And we are going to talk to a variety of people who made this come together. And we're also going to show you part of the program that exists as part of this First Street celebration here on January 24th. So, after words from our sponsors, we'll be right back with the, the guy who designed all this, Marty Serena, after a word from one of our sponsors. You stay tuned. Tony, your parents know you're over here again, right? Yep. Great. Tony lives next door. See, his parents decided to just use their phone for home internet. So when everyone is on, Tony's over here streaming and drinking on my soda. My dog. Switch to fast internet on the Xfinity 10G network today. The future starts now. We're going to bed, Tony. Good night. I'll lock up if I leave. Get real home internet on the next generation 10G network only from Xfinity. We're back and very pleased to have as our first guest today, Marty Serena of the firm of Serena and Sturm, designers, architects, and in this case, the major brain behind the First Street Plaza, which we'll show you in a few minutes. And Marty, it's good to have you here, first of all, and it's been a pleasure to work with Thank you. Thank you very much. Along the line here. And uh, if I may start, how about a little background for our audience about Serena and Sturm. How long have you been in designing? And uh, we know you're a fighting Irish Notre Dame graduate. And we're always uh, akin in that regard. <laughs> but uh, let's talk a bit about your, your whole career. Sounds good. Uh, well, I was blessed to be able to go to the University of Notre Dame. It was, uh, it's a five-year professional degree program. Uh, which incorporated, uh, ha I also had an opportunity to spend a year studying Rome, Italy, uh, studying the classical architecture, uh, which was absolutely fantastic. And uh, Bill and I were classmates together. And, and so we became kind of kindred spirits because we both shared a passion for designing uh, share, uh, sustainable architecture. That's Bill Stern, right? Bill Stern, yes. All right. And when you say sustainable architecture, what does that mean necessarily? So, uh, we, things that, you know, when things are built well, designed well, they have a tendency to be more sustainable. They last longer. People uh, respect the beauty and uh, they have a tendency to be uh, better maintained. Uh, but as importantly, uh, it also talks about marrying uh, the building process uh, with a respect towards nature. So sustainable architecture uh, does not always occur just the building itself, but also the, the, the placing of the building on a site in a way that's uh, ecologically responsible. Is that a, a subgroup or specialty in, in architecture? Well, it has become the mainstream, uh, but uh, we graduated from Notre Dame back in 1976. I'm not a graduate. <laughs> back in 76, and at the time it, it, it was um, it was an idea that, uh, that also incorporated cultural and social issues, such as uh, the idea that, uh, that the building is an internal thing, but also uh, it's a place for people. So um, it's one thing getting the function done there, it's, a, it's another thing having the uh, occupants of the building enjoy that time in that space and become more productive, as well as uh, the impact of placing that building on the earth and whether it is in harmony with nature or whether it competes with nature. I see. Now, uh, before we get into the specifics of uh, doing things for people, which we're going to talk about here in a second, right? how long have you been in St. Charles with Serena and Stern? Okay, so... Uh, we started our firm, two guys in a basement in Lake Forest in 1983. And from there, we grew into the middle uh, 90s. We had 33 architects that worked for us. We, we've done all types of, any kind of 
well, I shouldn't say all types. It's, it's a, uh, exact, maybe an exaggeration. We've done corporate, religious, uh, medical, um, education. We've done education from preschool, Montessori, 20,000 uh, square foot preschool, Montessori school, to uh, science and learning center for Benedictine University. Uh, we've just been uh, very blessed. But the common thread through all of that work is our our interest in, in being sensitive and, and wise in how we develop a building. Uh, we've actually had uh, a couple of projects. The last two projects are uh, energy neutral, which means that in a 12 month period, they produce more energy than they consume. Uh, so we're, we're, we're very focused on that aspect. Of it. Now this initiative committee was created to put the final leg on a two plus decade project here, first street project. And so I guess the, the, the overlying question is they came to you and asked you to design this. My question would be, what kinds of things the initiative committee provide for you to create what we're seeing over here on First Street? Okay, so um, we, in, in our architecture, uh, <laughs> we were both first generation architects. So in order to break through, to be able to actually do buildings, uh, we were a couple of young guys. We started doing a lot of work with office building, commercial projects, where we would work with uh, many, you know, 100,000 square foot office development where we designed interiors for them. So we had developed this process we call it appreciative inquiry, where you we get in to understand the corporate structure, what's the driving force, whether they're an R&D company or whether they're a legal book company that's been around forever. So with this group, with the City of St. Charles and with um, the uh, St. Charles Initiative, we started uh, the project with a pre-design phase, prior to design, of appreciative inquiry. And what appreciative inquiry is, is where you have everybody at the table have an opportunity to highlight what they think this project should deliver in the way of a result. And they gave you a lot, didn't they? And they gave, <laughs> they gave us a lot. And at the end of that process, what we, um, what we do is we create a vision statement for that project that acts as a tool for decision making as, as you go along. And what that, uh, in this particular case, was that we were asked to, to create a unique space that reflected the uh, natural beauty. Right. And the- And you're not talking and, about Ray's wife over here. No, we're, <laughs> <laughs> well, of, of course I am. <laughs> in addition to Ray's wife, yes. we, we're living in a, you know, a green city sure. with a beautiful river. And then, uh, so it was the idea of creating a, a, a unique place that respected um, the natural beauty and the historical heritage. So if you notice, the plaza interfaces with Baker right. and City Hall right. and, and the river. Right. And the design, I know we're going to talk about the design a little bit, but the, the design was structured in a way that it met that those vision statements. Uh, as a result. Obviously, Ray was involved and he knows more about this than yeah. I do, uh, but it seems to me as though everything seems to blend in with other things. So what was the project, and I know we're gonna walk through it, what was the project and what wasn't the project? This area here, this walkway here, I mean, were these part of the, the okay. project or is it just exclusive to this? No, great, great question. So the project boundaries yes. were North Avenue, the river, right, and then on the on the west, you can see the existing grid, right. That was there previously, and then the building facade, and then it went down to Wallet Street, which is the entrance to the parking garage. Yeah, we're we're Wall standing on the uh, now closed First Street from Main to the garage here. And it's not going to have any cars, uh, emergency vehicles, perhaps, but that's going to be about yeah. it. Yeah. I got to ask this question because I know that you talked about it in, in the planning stages. What other models did you use? Did you use some other, you, you okay. talked about some other cities that you actually worked in. Yes. Can you just be highlight one or two? Uh, sure. I, th I think the most 
uh, exciting project they worked, we worked on was in uh, Chautauqua, at the Chautauqua Institution in Western New York. Uh, it ended up being a, a five-year project, $32 million, and, and it was, uh, again, in the downtown core. And at the Chautauqua Institution, they have programs that last nine weeks over the summer. And there was a, an existing um, amphitheater that was uh, constructed at the turn of the century, 18, 1800s. Uh, it was an open air facility with a roof and, and a stage. And as you might imagine, being built at the turn of the century, it was a wooden structure. Mm -hmm. So here we are 100 years later and, uh, or more, and we're mm -hmm. renovating it. Nice. And, and so it was, a, it was a very important project for the community. Uh, because it was a paradigm shift. The, the community one wanted to increase their programs, they wanted to increase their seating by 10%. Uh, they wanted to uh, bring in modern technology. You know, technology has changed a lot since the 1800s. Uh, but on this stage, uh, Marcel Marceau had performed. Uh, He's a mime. Yeah, Roosevelt <laughs> did his I Hate War speech. Uh, Mormon Tabernacle Choir, the history just went on forever. And it was right in the heart of the Chautauqua Institution. So as you might expect, if you have a 5,000 seat, you thought of this as a 5,000 seat venue, then all of the spaces that were contiguous to that space were affected. Mm -hmm. uh, and we spent um, quite a bit of time, one summer, we spent just talking about the design through this appreciative inquiry process to develop the final solution that the community then voted on and, and approved. Go ahead. Uh, you, you talked a little bit about your background with uh, Italy yes. and Rome. Yes. Uh, any of that here today? With uh, uh, So my wife and I lived uh, just south of Piazza del Popolo. That's over by Batavia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Piazza del Popolo called, and what that means in Italian is place of the people. Oh, okay. And so uh, I'm, I love uh, Italian heritage, and, and one of the things that's interesting about the Italians is they always have a tendency to have very good dialogue. Sure. You know, I think it's this, I think it's that. Well, in Rome, whenever there is a period where the people are trying to make a point, that uh, that group of people will march up Via del Corso, they'll go to Piazza del Popolo, and they'll have a very interesting dialogue. <laughs> for, for you personally, if you had to identify one or two things in this design that appeal to you the most, they really hit at the heart of Marty Serena, what are they? Well, I, the, you know, I think it's the unique element here uh, is the pergola. And the, the, the thing about the pergola, we were talking a little bit before about how it stands out. Uh, and if you can imagine the lush greenery and the planter, it's the pergola that really unifies the space. We're creating three major spaces here. We have the avenue that connects Route 64 to the retail space. We have the gathering space in the center which is a very flexible space for a lot of different venues, whether it's the lighting of the Christmas trees or a special program. I think the city did a study and almost every public event that the city holds could be held inside the plaza. Nice. And then it, the trellis also will bring you down to the, the fish, fisherman's uh, walk down below, total uh, ADA accessibility. So what it does is it takes, it collects the river a major gathering space, which we, you might call the family room with dining and entertainment. And the avenue, the more commercial avenue, that takes you down uh, first. And the these, other, one other okay. element that I think is really important in today's world, uh, you know, we, we, we think a lot about um, making a choice. There seems to be that we have to make a choice about going to the left or going to the right. And the, the, what we tried to capture here was a place for people, an outdoor place that reflected and and captured the, the natural beauty of Chicago. So the tree canopies that are in our neighborhoods run, will run through this space. Instead of being a straight street that says you gotta go left, you gotta go right, it's meandering like the river. The river connects all of the communities down to Ottawa, where I was born, 
uh, together and it goes into the Illinois. So this is meant to be a space that has no clear direction but brings people together to have a, you know, a wonderful day watching the kids skateboard in the park or just sit down, watch, go down to the Fisherman's Wharf and relax or take a stroll down the street and mm -hmm. visit all of your favorite shops. One final question here, I think uh, we're getting close to uh, going down and, and going to a reception, and that is this. I want you to tell the people of St. Charles, you the designer, I want you to tell them what, what you perceive the benefits of this gathering place are. So, we are a very large, very diverse, uh, very exciting community. This is uh, just geographically, it is strategically located in the heart of our city. One of the biggest challenges of, uh, one of the assets of the river is its connection to the north and the south, but it divides us to the east and the west. And so there, this is one opportunity to bring everybody in the city to a central place and our neighbors, our neighboring communities, welcome them into the city and, and gather and have that social conversation, have the ability to connect with one another, that a lot of times uh, life is busy these days. And uh, this is an opportunity on a Saturday or a weekday night during, uh, during the week to be able to gather people together and socialize and, 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 and gather the community for special events. Yeah. You indicated a little bit about the chaos that matches the river. Yes. And perhaps this gives uh, people an opportunity to reach consensus. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You nailed it. Yeah. You nailed it. That, and, well, you know, my wife and I have been married for, you know, 49 years. Uh, I don't know that we will always reach consensus, <laughs> yes. but we have a lot of really good conversations. The effort, the effort, <laughs> yeah. I think the effort is what we have to yeah, the down, right? yeah, The atmosphere for that conversation, I think, is huge. It's so, great. Right, I want to say that on behalf of the committee, we are proud of you and your efforts here today, and this is the finishing product, finished product, I should say, of uh, a lot of work and a lot of dedication. People of St. Charles will be proud of it. And I can speak for myself, and I think I can speak for the whole committee, and I can speak for the city of St. Charles. We're proud of you, sir, as a citizen, and thank you so much. Oh, great. Thank you very much. I can't tell you how much that means. Thanks, Marty. Thank you. Very Pleasure much. to meet you. It's wonderful. Marty Serena, the designer of the First Street Plaza. We'll take a minute, and we'll be right back. Hello friends, this is Ray Rogina. Are you looking for the place to be? Voted best live music and entertainment venue by the Daily Herald in 2023? That would be Old Republic in Elgin. An indoor-outdoor hub with classic American eats, beer and cocktails, plus the best sports bar, burgers, wings, and ribs. Best value? Old Republic. Another good place to be. Well, we're back. We're out of the rain. We're inside in the Sterling Bank building. And we're pleased to have as our second guest for today, the former city administrator of the city of St. Charles, former public works director, and a general good friend of both Pat and myself, Mark Kamen. Mark how are you? How are you? Nice to have you here today. Let's just get right up, right to it here and ask this question. You, sir, were a key staff member and eventually city administrator for this entire two-decade project from the turn of the century, 2000 or so, right until we finish up today. What events stand out and maybe what events were frustrating? Okay, what, what, the first street project, what stood out? I think it's the, the mere fact that the city of St. Charles uh, had the intestinal fortitude, I'll say, to move forward with a project of this nature. It was expensive, uh, it was thorny, and it was an exciting project. But it was going to change downtown, and that was the goal. Push an economic development, and it was good for the community. It was good for the community. Anything frustrating about oh, it? Oh, frustrating. Because you remember most of this work. The thorny part. The thorny part. The 
thorny part. Yeah. We're public works for a lot of the time. Well, a lot I, of infrastructure came in here. I, I'll look at the big picture here. You know, what was thorny was that the economy didn't always agree with our project. I mean, as the pandemic came along, right. uh, it slowed the project down from what was originally scheduled uh, for a completion of the project. In fact, there's some some lesser uh, some lesser elements of the project that still need to be done. Uh, but what's important today is we're celebrating a milestone on the project for a street plaza. Well, let me ask, and maybe other people who aren't from St. Charles would have the same questions. You had a project that's two decades in the making, uh, and then today we have the plaza. So. What was the original project, and then how did it become what it is today? Well, the original project included three or four elements. Number one uh, was the under, underpinnings was we wanted to promote economic development. We wanted to build a downtown that caused people to be able to shop, uh, be entertained uh, with dining or, or enjoying the river, uh, to be able to live downtown. And, and I think that's, you can see it was successful. Uh, the proof is in the pudding. Sure. Um, so I, I, I think the project went really well, and that was from Larry Mahalan, uh, former and first uh, city administrator's goal for the project, um, and he would be very proud of that project today. And then it expanded into what is now the plaza and what, right. we're, what we're doing here today. Well, the plaza project was originally not going to be a plaza. There was going to be at least a three-story building. Correct. Uh -huh. and, you know, there was talk of a financial institution there, uh, some establishment with uh, dining and outdoor rooftop dining on the very top. You know, and you hear things through the years about, oh, we wish we could see the river, or uh, wouldn't open space be nice? Uh, let's celebrate a corner of the river on Main Street, St. Charles. Right. Like we have the hotel and the municipal center, and you know, kind of evolved into this open space concept. And while you were city administrator, I recall, we did a little city survey and, and, and wanted to find out would a plaza, would an open space there uh, wet the pallets of our residents? And the overwhelming evidence said yes. Yes, yes. It, well, this was the middle of the pandemic, too. I mean, we wanted to see what citizens thought and what they would want to have in a plaza. Uh, and the survey was a tremendous tool. And, and, you're, and you're right, right? Uh, the citizens said, we want it, we like it, and we want to close First Street. Right. Oh, that was pushed. That was overwhelming. That was just overwhelming. So in the egg chicken scenario, closing First Street kind of led to the logic of the plaza. Is that right? That's exactly right. Yeah. Because who would have ever dreamt we would close the street? Right. All right, you're a civil engineer. We won't take all your time because we want to get back in and mingle with all the people. But as a civil engineer, and looking at this last piece out there, and it's, we're going to cut the ribbon today, critique it. I like the plaza, I like open space. That's a good um, answer there. Uh, number, <laughs> <laughs> uh, number two, you know, you want to celebrate the river. How many communities are centered on a river that runs through the community? And this gives people the opportunity to come down and enjoy it, um, to meet friends and family. Uh, it's a public space, it's not private, uh, which so much of the riverbank, particularly to the north and south of uh, outside the city limits of St. Charles is. I mean, I think it's, I think it's great. Yeah. I think everyone in the community will enjoy it. And if you haven't been there yet, please come down, shop, dine, live, enjoy yourself. Marty said there's room for about 3,000 people. No, the smoke is clear. I, I don't know if I want to see that big a crowd when I'm sitting down there reading a book, but it, it's beautiful and it will serve decades and decades of people. I'm hoping they get a job as a juggler. Just to walk around, just to entertain the people. Don't forget to get your license. Oh, yeah, right. license. Permit. Permit. And, 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 and there'll, be a, there'll be a fee involved with that. <laughs> Our guest, Mark Cannon, a, a great guy, uh, like a brother to me, and uh, I appreciate all that you've done, sir, for this project over two plus decades. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank My you. My pleasure, sir. Thanks, Thanks for giving you. us some time. Take care, Pat. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back, and we'll be talking to the mayor. You stay tuned. Hello, friends. This is Ray Rogina. You face technology challenges every day that threaten to steal business, compromise data, and bring your business down. Without a good partner to help protect from phishing, ransomware, viruses, data breaches, employee turnover, and cybersecurity threats, your business is at risk of losing everything. TechWorks has been the trusted IT partner to Fox Valley businesses for over 20 years, keeping systems secure, and providing extraordinary customer service, helping your business grow. Call TechWorks today 
at 630-482-2227 or visit www.techworks.com. That's TechWorks with a Q. T-E-Q works and see how TechWorks IT service can transform and secure your business. hear me? Okay, excellent. How about one more time? Can everyone hear me? <laughs> okay, thank you. My name is Mary Laura Vitek. I'm here with Alderman Ed Besner. He's the chair of the initiative. We're very excited to be here this evening to unveil and open the First Street Plaza. Um, this has been an effort that's been many, many, many years in the making. Earlier this evening, we heard from former Mayor Ray Rogina, John Hoshite, Ed Besner about the many administrations and mayors that have put so much time and effort into this and I do want to give them credit tonight so thank you for all the work of all those administrations. Um, First Street Plaza is going to be a great place once these winter months kick but we figured we'd do this in January because you know in January it's kind of dull and everyone's sad and we want to do something special so we're doing this here today. Um, before we get to the actual ribbon cutting of this, um, we do, uh, back on Veterans Day, one of our residents, Dwayne Stevenson, turned 100, World War II veteran. Mm -hmm. And with that, he received an American flag, and he donated it to us for the recognition we gave him for his birthday. So what's very special about that is we were thinking of ways that we could utilize that flag, and it's actually going to be on the plaza. So, yes, thank you. So now I welcome the fire department honor guard. The flagpole is directly to my right, and they are going to, I believe, oh, they're there, raise the flag. Thank you. I don't see it. Right here. Right by the light. Yeah. Thank you to our St. Charles Fire Department on our ground. Um, at this time, I uh, just want to recognize a few people and organizations. Alter Brewing tonight is providing hot beverages, non-alcohol, outside, just so everyone knows. So help yourself to that. Thank you for that donation. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming. I, we do want to recognize a few individuals up here to help us cut the ribbon. So I would like to invite the St. Charles Initiative members up to stand next to Ed including John Hoshite, if you still out here, please. I'd like to invite the St. Charles City Council up here to stand to my right. I would like Marty Serena up here as well. Thank you. I know you're part of the committee, but I have to call you out. City staff, if you'd please join us. State officials. I know Dan's out here, maybe still. Matt, Becky, come on. Oh, okay. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, donors, thank you for making this happen. Please join us up here. That might be the majority of the people on the plaza right now. Thank you. <laughs> As everyone's still coming on up, I want to make sure we'll get everyone in the appropriate order for Lisa so she gets a good picture. Um, this is a project I'm very proud of. I'm very proud of this entire city. Like this is just one really cool thing, but there's so many cool things about St. Charles. So as we know, people are gonna come visit this this spring and summer, and they're gonna be visiting all of our other businesses in St. Charles. And it just makes it a more spectacular place. So all of you up here, keep doing what you're doing. Keep the support up. The community's wonderful. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep visiting our establishments. And um, just wanna thank you, St. Charles. So Ed, on the count of three, can we, Un, uh, un velcro the ribbon, Lisa? <laughs> All right, you just ruined the magic. Oh, oops. Okay, so I, I'm not going to tip off. We'll just yell it. Can everyone come oh, with yeah. me, please? Oh, yeah. So, ready? One, two, three. Thank you for joining us this evening. That concludes our session ceremony, and I hope that you'll stick around and visit all of our wonderful businesses on First Street and all around the city here on Riverside, down the street, down 64. So thank you.